Hello, I'm Matthew Wagner, and I'd like to introduce you to one of the videos that forms part of the video series that was taken from a series of podcasts that I produced a while ago, audio podcasts, which I've taken and I've converted them to a series of videos and enhanced them. So I do hope that you enjoy the video. Hi, and welcome to another podcast from PanicAttackRecovery.com, home of the free newsletter on Panic Attack Recovery. I'm Matthew Wagner. Thank you for joining me. Today I'd like to talk about something called anxiety and happiness. That's what I've titled the podcast. If you've uh, seen any of my other works, if you've seen my website or listened to other podcasts, you might recall that I've discussed that happiness at least for the anxiety and panic attack sufferer, is really something that means uh, more along the lines of not being overwhelmed by anxious thoughts, because that is often what anxiety sufferers are primarily struggling with. Now, I've discussed two fundamentals in the past, and I just want to remind you again. These two fundamentals are things that will allow you to work towards happiness happiness, as it were, for the anxiety sufferer, but there's more. You can live a happy life if you continue to work on these fundamentals. The fundamentals were, number one, I referred to the first one as setting the agenda to make an ongoing commitment throughout the day to keep working on your thoughts. So what I'm referring to here is referring to the idea of always allowing yourself enough time throughout the day to work on your thoughts, and (laughs) by now, if you've read or heard any of my other works, you know that one of the primary recommendations, certainly not the only recommendation though, is cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. CBT allows you to work on your thoughts at any time and your thoughts about any situation that comes up to locate the the distortions in your thinking and to replace the distortions with healthier thoughts that make you feel better healthier and more accurate thoughts. So you're not fooling yourself, you're actually coming up with a more accurate thought about the situation or thoughts about the situation. So that's the first fundamental. So allowing yourself enough time to do this and actually doing it throughout the day. Just like an ongoing process, if you think about, you know, you get up in the morning and you eat breakfast, that's an important part of the day. Same with CBT and more so same with setting the agenda to allow yourself time for self-help in general. Number two, fundamental is being resilient. What I'm referring to here is that there are often going to be times when things don't go in your life how you expect them to go or how they should go. And by working with these things, again, you can work on your thoughts with CBT, and there are many other ways as well, but knowing that there will be times when things will go as you don't intend them to go, and knowing that by being resilient with that and bouncing back, you can actually get back on track more quickly and um, what seemed to be an impasse at the time is just a small bump in the road and you're back on track. And that really can be a big change because often um, people may have perfectionist tendencies and they think to themselves, here we go again, things aren't working out again. But if you saw these things as, oh yes, this happens from time to time, uh, it's a part of life, I expect this to happen from time to time, it referring to things not going according to plan, whatever. I just need to move on and all will be well because I'll be able to focus on the next thing. Then you'll move along fine, but it's getting stuck in the perfectionistic tendency saying, okay, things didn't work out perfectly according to plan, therefore everything's bad. You don't want to get caught in that trap. Now I want to talk about a study today that provides more incentive on the issue of happiness and uh, and actually really reinforces why you want to keep following through in these fundamentals. This was an English study actually and it suggested that therapy may be more effective at making people happy than getting a raise or even winning the lottery. Researchers analyzed data on thousands of people who provided information about their mental well-being and they found that an increase in happiness from a $1,300 course of therapy was so significant that it would take a pay raise of more than 41000 to achieve an equal boost in well-being. So in other words, 
The therapy could be as much as 32 times more cost-effective at improving well-being than simply getting more money. This is what the researchers stated. The study was published online in the journal Health Economics Policy and Law. Chris Boyce of the University of Warwick, who was the study's author, indicated, and this is his, I'm quoting him, we have shown that psychological therapy could be much more cost-effective than financial compensation at alleviating psychological distress. He goes on to state, this is not only important in courts of law where huge financial rewards are the default way in which pain and suffering are compensated, but has wider implications for public health and well-being. Often the importance of money for improving our well-being and bringing greater happiness is vastly overvalued in our societies. Boyce continued to state, the benefits of having good mental health, on the other hand, are often not fully appreciated and people do not realize the powerful effect that psychological therapy, such as non-directive counseling, can have on improving our well-being. For more information on panic attack recovery, recovery from agoraphobia and anxiety, please visit my website at panicattackrecovery.com and sign up for my free and continuous newsletter. Thank you. Material in this newsletter is provided for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for a psychologist, psychiatrist, or other health care provider's consultation. Please consult a psychologist, psychiatrist, or appropriate health care provider about the applicability of any opinions or recommendations with respect to your own panic attacks, anxiety, and agoraphobia, or any other symptom or condition.